Hello there and welcome to my second ever vlogcast. Now if you didn't see the first one, basically a vlogcast is a little bit like a podcast where you listen to somebody uh, giving a talk about something. Here on a vlogcast, uh, it's basically just a very informal, off-the-cuff, unscripted chat with me. Um, it's going to be very minimal editing, um, I'm not really worried too much about how it all sounds and basically I'll be covering things that I can't very easily cover in a regular vlog. It's a bit of an experiment um, so please tell me what you think of it when you've watched all of this. So for today's vlogcast uh, I'd like to talk about cycling clubs. I'll start off with my involvement with cycling clubs and then I'll move on and give some of the advantages of being a member of a cycling club and perhaps some of the uh, the reasons why a cycling club might not be the right thing for you. So basically my involvement with cycling clubs started in the autumn of 2001. Up until that point I'd been doing a lot of cycling on my own, doing rides kind of 60, 70, 80 kilometres uh, and I thought it was time that I, I found some new chums to ride with. So I got onto the internet and I started doing some research and I quickly found one of the, the big local clubs, one called Portsmouth North End and it just so happened that the year before they'd celebrated their centenary so they were a well-established, very well-respected club. So I turned up to their club night on a Monday uh, and I have to admit it was a little bit intimidating. I walked into the hall, there were a load of people who I didn't know, all hardcore cyclists and it was rather intimidating. But I needn't have worried because literally the first person that came up to me was a chap called Des. Uh, he was very friendly, he introduced me to everybody uh, and to this day he's still one of my very good cycling chums. The following Sunday I went out and did the first ever club run with the North End and it was quite an eye opener to say the least. Um, basically uh, I thought I was a reasonable cyclist until I joined them and then it just quickly showed me how slow I actually was. I really struggled to keep up with them. The, the first ride I did was something like uh, 80 kilometres so it was quite long. Uh, and yet it was just very, very hard going. But to my surprise, I very quickly managed to keep up on the flats and just about managed to kind of keep within maybe three or four minutes of them on the climbs. Now, the Portsmouth North End are a very good club and they basically have what they call a no drop policy. So that doesn't mean that everybody rides the same speed as the slowest rider. What will happen is that everyone will ride along uh, at their own kind of pace, particularly up the climbs, and it will get to certain points where everyone will stop, wait for, for the slower riders to catch up, and when they've regrouped, they'll continue the ride. So that's, that's one of the things to kind of look for to indicate that you're riding with a decent club. One of my other reasons for joining a cycling club was because I quite fancy trying some racing. Now here in the UK, you can't just turn up to a bike race and expect to take part. You have to be a member of a club that's officially affiliated with British Cycling. And indeed, the North End was and indeed still are. So my first ever race was a 10 mile time trial. It was what they call an open and basically you have to kind of write in advance and get a starting position and there were quite a few other people riding it. It was uh, I think about probably 80 or 90 riders but you ride against the clock individually uh, in a time trial and this particular one was on a very fast 10 mile course. Now the benchmark that you aim for for a 10 miler is to, tr to try and ride it under half an hour. And I think on that particular day, I think my time was something like 38, 39, might even have been 40 minutes. And needless to say, I was kind of way down the field. I think I might even have been last or second to last or something like that. But I wasn't disappointed. It was my very first time trial. Uh, I was expecting to do a relatively slow time. 
Um, but I knew that I would get better. And indeed, four or five years later in 2005, uh, I did the same course and I did a PB for a 10 mile on that, that, that exact same course with a time of just over 24 minutes. And then in September 2002, so roughly a year after joining the North End, a few of us decided to break away and form our own club, which we did, and we called it Team Axiom. Now, uh, my first event with Team Axiom was a two-up time trial. Again, it was 10 miles long, uh, and I rode it with a lady cyclist called Nikki, who was particularly fast. And again, it was everything I could do to kind of hold on to her wheel. Basically, when you ride a two-up time trial or a team time trial, you only get the time of the, the last rider to cross the line. And consequently, Nikki and I crossed the line with quite a, a slow time. I think if Nikki had done it on her own, she'd have been quite quick. But I was kind of holding her back. But nevertheless, um, it, was, it was a great event to do. The weather was absolutely awful, I seem to remember. Um, but it was, it was like a benchmark event for, for the new club of Team Axiom. And then a month later, uh, I did my first ever Mallorca trip with Team Axiom. Uh, up until then, I'd never even realised that, uh, that Mallorca was the place to go for cyclists. And when I was out there, I did all of the, the regular climbs that everybody does, uh, including the big climb on the island, which is the Puig Mayor. Now, if memory serves, it's about 20 kilometers long with an average gradient of about 6 or 7%. I never did the Sacalobra one, which is the iconic climb on the island. Uh, and in the five trips that I've made since then, I still haven't uh, ridden up Sacalobra, but I hope to change that when I go out there, hopefully in September this year. I also fancied trying my hand at a bit of road racing. Now, being gravitationally challenged like I am, I knew that I had absolutely no hope of keeping up with a peloton on a regular road racing course, particularly around here where it's fairly hilly. But luckily for me, we had something called the Goodwood Gallops that take place on the very famous uh, Goodwood motor racing circuit near Chichester. And that has the advantage of being pretty much pan flat. So I did my first road race in September 2004, and I did find it hard, I'll be the first to admit that. Normally, when I rode on my own, my average speed was around 30 kilometers an hour, but uh, on the very first road race I did, that jumped to about 40 kilometers an hour. And basically it was everything I could do to kind of just grit my teeth, focus on the wheel in front of me and just hang in there for the 30 laps of the race. And to my surprise, I didn't actually do too badly. Um, I remember coming in kind of 10th and 15th and things like that. Uh, and I never once dropped out of the race because I couldn't keep up. So I was really, really pleased with that. So fast forward 18 years uh, and Team Axiom uh, no longer organises things like road races, time trials or even the regular Sunday club run. So Team Axiom these days is pretty much social. Uh, they have a Monday evening uh, get together which unfortunately I, I don't uh, attend all that often but I do get to see them uh, things like Christmas and we have meals and social uh, events and that's that's really nice to catch up with everybody. Um, but I have made some, some friends through the group and um, I do occasionally still go cycling with them. Now officially I am still a member of Team Axiom and Team Axiom is still officially affiliated as far as I know to British Cycling. So that means if I so choose I could still do some time trials or even a road race although that's pretty unlikely. Now I do so I kind of say to myself from time to time that I would like to take up time trialing again, but obviously I will need to lose a bit of weight and gain a bit of fitness, but it's not impossible. So I am on the lookout for a new team to ride with, particularly for the weekend club rides. And I thought I found one fairly recently. I went out on a ride with them and literally within 100 meters of the start, there was a climb. Uh, they all rode off and I never saw them again for about seven or eight kilometers and that was very disheartening. The rest of the ride wasn't much better either. We did regroup occasionally, 
but the the course itself was very long it was about 70 kilometers and it was very very hilly we climbed up three or four of the the major climbs locally and it was just a bit beyond me now i did kind of cast my mind back to remember the the early days of the north end club run and i was trying to tell myself that okay yes if i keep uh, riding with them I will get better and I will get faster and I will be able to keep up but at that particular point it was just such a slog that uh, I thought no I'm probably best off just riding on my own and trying to get a bit fitter by myself. Now this brings me round to the disadvantages of being in a cycling club mainly if you aren't fit enough or you aren't fast enough you will struggle to keep up with people. Plus, if you don't like the route, then you know, you're know you kind of stuck with it. You either have to ride the route that everyone chooses or you have to go off and ride by yourself. But for me, the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages. Namely, you are meeting a group of like-minded people and some of those will have considerable experience. So they can give you all sorts of advice, namely things like maintenance advice, riding tips and fitness advice. Plus, if you are riding with a group that's slightly faster than you are, that is one of the best ways of improving your own fitness and your own speed. Plus, again, if you are riding in a big group, there's the security feature. If you're riding by yourself and you have an incident, say a puncture or a mechanical or, or heavens forbid, something a little worse, you're kind of stuck. But if something like that happens, when you're out with your club, you've got people there that can look after you and hopefully get you back on the road. Plus, if you do want to ride things like sportives, you'll have no choice but to ride in larger groups. And riding with a club can teach you that skill. So there we go. That's cycling clubs in a nutshell. And hopefully you've got information there to decide if it's for you or not. Now, hopefully you've liked this uh, this new format of the vlogcast. As I say, it is a bit of an experiment so any uh, feedback on that would be greatly appreciated so that's either positive or negative feedback and similarly if you'd like me to cover a subject that uh, that I don't normally cover in a vlog please tell me all about that in the comments below and I'll do my best to make a film about it thanks for watching